Hi guys, StuDog here, and today I'll be going over 10 Yu-Gi-Oh cards that got reprinted but were still super expensive. So reprints have always been a great thing in Yu-Gi-Oh to make the most sought after cards accessible for players who don't feel like spending 30 to 100 plus dollars on pieces of cardboard. But there's always been those cards that get those reprints they deserved but still maintain such high value. And today we're going to be going over 10 of the most notable cards that fell into this category. Starting things off with Trisha the Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Now this card was banned for like... A year and a half to two years. Got that original printing in Hidden Arsenal 4 Secret Rare 30 40 plus dollar card. Eventually got a new printing after it got unbanned in the High Speed Rider. Still $30 card. Ultimate Rare Printing Astro Pack 8. Still $50 plus dollar card. It recently got another printing in Duelist Saga, but still $20 card. Turns out you should have picked up your Trishlas when they were banned, because this card has never been below like $20 when it's been legal. Always expensive, gets these reprints, but still maintains that high value price. Going on to Blacklist or Soldier Envoy, the beginning. So for the longest of times, this card was banned. It finally came back after it got reprinted in that Gold Series 4. And that Gold Series came out before the card came off the ban list in September 2011. The Gold Series came out in July 2011. After the ban list, this was a $35 Gold Rare. It got a new reprint in the Legendary Collections Yu-Gi-Oh! World as a Secret Rare. That was still a $35 card. One of the most sought after cards after it came off the ban list. And it took all the way till the tins in 2013 for this card to finally become accessible. But for two years, it was one of the most sought after cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! That you had to have that was $35. Yeah. Going on to Solemn Strike. Oh, the beautiful, beautiful Solemn Strike. Gets the reprint in the Mega Tins. Doesn't matter. Still $30, $40 plus. Dollars. Gets a reprint as an Ultimate Rare. And this has been one of the most expensive OTS pack Ultimate Rares we have seen yet. As it was hitting $100 for the longest of times, and it's still $70 to $80 plus. You can't really find any cheaper than that. That's $210 for a place at Ultimate Solemn Strikes. Still, the secret rares have been $30 to $40. They've gone down a little bit now, but it keeps on avoiding the ban list, and it most definitely is a staple. We'll keep on maintaining that price value of $30 plus for sure, as long as it stays at $3. Going on to Tour Guide from the Underworld, one of the most sought after cards and most expensive cards from a booster set you could have pulled, $150 for one. It was like the best card when Exceeds first came out, secret rare, super hard to pull. Got a reprint in the first battle pack as a black rare and it was a $36 black rare. I remember, $36, that's more than $100 for black rares for a play set of Tour Guides. That's just crazy talk. And then finally, later that year, in the um, collectible tins, it got a more accessible reprint as a super rare, but still, the first initial reprint of Tour Guide, way too much money. Now, I know it went down from $150 to, like, 36 35 I guess, give or take, but still, that's just too much money. When a card gets reprinted, it shouldn't be more than $20. That's, that's just what should happen. In my opinion. Anyway, going on to Utopia the Lightning. The beautiful Utopia Lightning got that reprint. It's a super rare in the Dark Illusion Special Edition. European exclusive. So for people from Europe watching this video, it's probably a lot cheaper. But still, for guys in America, that's over 20 plus dollars. You're going to have to waste on Utopia the Lightning. The ultimate reprint doesn't help at all as it's just so much more money. Cheapest one on eBay I was able to find was like $17. That's still way too much money for Utopia Lightning, I'm just saying. And for the longest of times, it was $30 plus dollars for, you know, even the Super Rare and, of course, the original printing of the Ultra Rare. Going on to Goyo Guardian, so the most sought-after secret rare, or I wouldn't say secret rare, the most sought-after level 6 synchro when it first came out. The best level 6 synchro when it first came out. It got reprinted in that collectibles tin in 2008, but even a few years later, it was still a $30 secret rare promo from the collectibles tin. Extremely expensive. You had to have Goyo Guardian in your extra deck. You didn't have Goyo Guardian. You you had nothing, man. It was super expensive until it got banned, and then finally came off the ban list, and then it got reprinted a lot. In a legendary collection later on down the road. It's dirt cheap now, but for the longest of time, it's got that reprint. Still $30. Yeah. Really? Going on to number 11, Big Eyes. So, a $90 to $100 secret rare out of Galactic Overlord. Finally got a reprint in the Battle Pack W2. That was the Ultra Rare Battle Pack. The new one, right? And it was still like $30, $25 plus dollars for the Big Eyes. So, still a very expensive 
reprinted Big Eye. Didn't really go down a whole lot until it got printed in the premium gold here as a gold rare, and now it's pretty dirt cheap. But for the longest of time, Big Eye was, you know, either $100 or $30. Like, okay, you pay $100 or $30, and that's still not that cheap for most budget players. Going on to Vanity's Emptiness for... Four years, this card was never reprinted. It finally got reprinted, and all it did was increase its price. 2014, the Legendary Collection 5D's Secret Rare. It was like a $50 Secret Rare. It was a $30 Common. And finally, in the winter of 2015, the beginning of the year, got printed as a Super Rare, and in the Secret Forces, the same set where the Necros came out, it was still a pretty expensive Super Rare. It was like a $7 to $10 Super Rare, and... Yeah, then it got limited, so it was much more accessible, and then now it's banned and it's dirt cheap, but for the longest and longest of times, this card was like $30 common, $25 common, a $40, $50 secret rare, and it was very annoying, and you had to have at least two or three for sure, so that was like $90 down the drain for a play set of commons, yeah, buddy. Going on to Evil Storm, Excite on Night, so... One of the most busted generic rank 4 exceed summons to be released came out in Legacy of the Valiant. It's like a $70 card, always maintained that value. Then it got printed in the Mega Tens, but it was still $40. It was a $40 secret rare out of the Mega Tens that very year. Yeah, it was a staple. You had to have it. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's banned now, but if it comes back, it'll be most definitely more than $40 or $50 for sure. So. From what we've seen with Trish, if this card ever comes back, you might want to pick it up because you know it will just go up a whole lot. It's already like a $12 card right now, so still going to be some money. Going on to Digusto Emerald. This is the final one. Yes, Digusto freaking Emerald. This card, man, has been out for over four years now and has never had a accessible reprinted version. Secret Rare has been like $30 to $40 its entire existence. The Battle Pack... Zero three didn't really do anything. The Starfoil version right here, still thirty dollars. Even the gold rare, it's like twenty five dollars at the cheapest now. You needed to play Zoo Staple Rank Four. If you can play it, why wouldn't you play it? Free plus one. You can play it in Gemini decks, normal decks. Bring back the normal monster with its second effect. Always been a great Rank Four exceeds monster. Diasto Emerald keeps it getting reprints keeps maintaining that $30, $40 value, no matter what. So anyway, that's all I gotta say about this video, guys. Thank you all for watching, as always. Hopefully you learned something new, and that's all I got. Till next time, Stew Dog, and I'm out.